course you are touring at the moment. So has the pandemic and all the restrictions that went down, has, has it changed the way you feel or think about touring? Well, you know, we generally lived on the road, right? So, so that means like we would be on the road for, you know, 200 days out of the year. So it was really bizarre for us at least that, you know, I had to step on the brakes. My, my non-existent big brakes, I, I only have gas pedal on my, you know, <laughs> and out of a sudden it had to stop. So, you know, it was fairly difficult and really bizarre, you know, just for the first couple of weeks, I was actually almost feeling guilty, you know, that I'm not, I'm not working on something. I'm not, you know, and then I sort of realized like, well, nobody else can work either. So that's kind of, you know, <laughs> could calm me down a little bit, but you know, but after after maybe like five six months, that kept going and going and going. When we start to realize, like, okay, this this might be taking forever, so we might have to go back to the studio and do another record. Because our previous record came out literally the week of the pandemic. So you know, we we, we figured like, okay, well, you know, a couple of months and whatever, we're back on the road and play that record, and then that didn't happen. And you know, after a good few months, we started to realize, like, wow, okay, this this is maybe a problem. And then, and so we went back to the studio and started to, you know, do another record. As for us for touring, I'm just I'm just happy to be back. As you mentioned, the last album came in uh, February 2020. So, considering that, how was it working on the upcoming album Afterlife? So you know what, and actually because we didn't really want to record an, another album because as i said we had f8 it, we were really proud of that record we were really happy with uh, how that came out we were really looking forward to touring on it you know and and literally out of necessity of just sitting home and calculating time and realizing like well if you know if we're gonna just wait until this you know the, the concerts can come back which you know concerts were the first to shut down and the last to come back so we figured like, well, if you're going to wait, who knows, a year, whatever, then then by the time, you know, we go back on the road and then touring for a while and go back to the studio again, then it might be three, four years before we make another album. And I always look at records that every album is a, a, a sort of a, a time capsule, a snapshot of who you are at the moment. And, you know, if you take a snapshot every two years, you know, that's you can follow somebody's development and somebody's, you know, um, life and what they are about but you know if you take a snapshot every five six years that's that's a pretty big gap right and the world is pretty fast these days if you disappear for a four five six years whatever it's you you disappear and so because of that we were like you know what let's do this it is this just let's just record and however we didn't have any sort of pressure because we didn't have any um you know deadline or you know not didn't matter how long it's gonna take and also, it was our ninth record. This one is nine or ninth record. So at this point, everybody knows how we sound like. You know, if, if you are into hard rock, heavy metal, you you know the band, you know our sound, you hear the first couple of riffs, you know it's fighting and that, much, right? So, so it was like we don't have to keep proving ourselves, so to speak, right? And it gave us it gave us this sort of freedom of you know what, just let's just record everything, whatever comes, let's just record it, you know, and and that gave us this 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 freedom of um, you know, I, I always compare this to like a band like Queen. We're not, we, we don't sound anything like Queen, but if you're trying to categorize Queen, you cannot. Queen doesn't fit in anywhere. And to me, that means that they achieved this musical freedom where they can be whatever, right? They can, they can play Bohemian in Rhapsody or, or, or whatever they want. They want to play heavy metal, that's what they're going to do. They don't, you know, they don't, they're not tied to something specific. And, and so that was kind of the idea that we can we get there? Can we get to a place where just write anything it doesn't matter, right? And and I think we achieved that. This record is the most diverse album that we ever done. Very different from everything we we ever done. Yet it still sound, sounds like us, you know. And so with that, I feel like we achieved kind of that that place where like just anything goes. We're just fifing in that bunch. It is what it is, you know. It's just music. Talking about that uh, freedom, uh, from your point of view, what kind of uh, musical directions did you end up taking on Afterlife? Well, I, I mean, that's 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 what I meant by, you know, at, at this point, it, it's, I, mean, I guess we're still in a broad spectrum of rock music, right? 
but you know that all the influences i mean there are some songs that that have even you know i would say even some 60s sort of you know vibe in there right and um some of the songs are very futuristic almost kind of a cyberpunk kind of feel to it some almost some industrial stuff and then and then there are songs where we we you know we use very complex complex sound sound design i wanted to i wanted to do a song that sort of a soundtrack to the process of that i had two near death experiences and and um and various spiritual experiences where you know, I wanted to create that sound, like what you hear, ha, ha, what what you you know when you, in the process of dying, your your your, the, the perception of sound gets kind of weird, like everything gets breaking down, like almost like you hear the sample rate of your own mind, that that the sound is not actually continuous, but there are tiny tiny gaps between, and when as as your you know as your body is shutting down, this this become very apparent, right, and so. We created a song Judgment Day and literally we built the song around that. Like, how does it sound like when you die? There is a, there's a sound. There's a sound that you hear. And we built it from that and then gave it to Ivan. And because he also had near that experiences, he he also <laughs> he flatlined and he had to be brought back. So he actually died. And um and he immediately recognized it. That's a crazy thing. In a second he heard it, he literally says, Oh man, this freaks me out. He immediately knew what the song was just by the sound. And he was like, this is, this, this makes, gets me freaked out because I've been in this place. I know what this sound is. Right. And for a while, he didn't even re- want to record it because he thought like, wow, this, every time when I listen to this song, it takes me back to that place when I was dying. And then eventually, actually, he did the song. So Judgment Day, that's why it has that weird sound because that's what we wanted to create. So, you know. I mean, I guess it's a, because of the or our instrumentation is, you know, drums, bass, guitar, guitar, vocal. That's always going to be a rock sort of music. So we are still a rock band, hard rock, whatever. But, you know, I think I think we kind of, you know, I don't know if I can categorize this particular album beyond that. Yeah, you have been uh, keeping busy otherwise, too. There's also talk about re-recording the 2007's uh, The Way of the Fist album on its 15th anniversary. So what kind of sparked this idea and how has it been to work on these songs again? So the, the, the idea came about, you know, that this every single record that we we, we, we did, except with that album, the first album, we recorded with Kevin Churko, right? And and our producer, and he's sort of built, he's built into this band almost, he's a family member kind of, you know? He's, he's our secret sixth member, so, so to speak. And since we work with Kevin, we have this, you know, pretty big production. The records sound really broad and wide. And we have these big, big sounding records, except for the first one, because, you know, I started this band 2004 five, you know, and, and the first record is pretty much the songs that I recorded it in my home. So all those songs that you hear on the first record was every guitar, every bass everything on that guitar i mean that album except for the drums and and the vocals were uh recorded in my living room you know with bathrobe and coffee mug in my head hand you know and literally and so i was working on this record for a couple of years and then once the music was done i started to recruit the band members and the first member was jeremy uh the drummer jeremy spencer then we went to the studio and recorded the drums and then once we had the drums you know then we started to recruit other members and and then finally kidnapped Ivan and you know and and then that's how the band was sort of formed but because the way that album was done i thought how cool this would be if, if we could give it that big production how would it sound like so that was kind of the idea and we actually started to record it we, we did a couple of songs but that was also the time when we started to realize that this pandemic might take longer than we expected. And, and we actually switched over like, you know what, we should do an actual record instead of, you know. So that's still hanging in there. It's it's still we probably we're going to finish it at one point. But we switched to, to, to over to this task because we thought, well, at this point, we just better off with making a new record. And after the first couple of songs, we realized that, wow. The things that are coming out of these sessions are pretty amazing. So let's just keep going. We were, you know, we got Andy James in the band. He's, he's a, he was a legitimate guitar hero before he was even in the band. You know, that kind of gave it a boost. You know, it was, you know, 
the, the whole band had this new lease on life, like this new energy, you know. And 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 during the pandemic, actually, Andy lived with me in Las Vegas because he's 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 from England, right? And but he just happened to be in in my house in America when the whole world shut down, so he couldn't even go home even if he, if he wanted to. So so we ended up, you know, so we ended up spending two years together, and you know, became really good friends and played a lot of guitar, and you know, and um. The whole band just had this. This whole thing actually brought us closer, believe you, believe it or not, because you know, because we were kind of in a, in a same, you know, in the same vicinity. Everybody lives in Las Vegas except for uh, our drummer Charlie. But, but there was this new energy, and and the songs were coming out great. So we were like, you know what? Let's let's put that that task to rest for now. We at one point might re-record that whole album, and uh, but this this new record was emerging and it was coming out incredible in my opinion i i love this record the process i love how we recorded it this is my favorite record both sonically what it is and and it was really fun to make the way of the feast is of course a great album uh if we can go a bit back in time in the 2000s what are like the first or best memories that come up when you think about the time of working on the way of the feast and recording it. Well, you know, it's it was the kind of thing where I, I had a very specific idea of what I wanted to do. You know, I had a very specific sound that I wanted to hear, and and it was literally, you know, kind of like the approach I took was was very pure, pure in a sense of 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 I wanted to make music that I felt I wanted. I wanted to listen to, and it was just wasn't out there, you know, and so, so it wasn't like, you know, there's a there's a, a specific style is hot, you know what I mean? Like when when new metal came and everybody was trying to do that, it was it was it was actually the opposite. Like I don't give a I don't care what's out there. I want to make a record that I absolutely love, and I don't care if it's popular. I don't care if people like it or don't. I don't care if it fits into the the scene at the time. I don't care. I wanted to do something very specific and basically the idea was that um you know I, I was not really a big fan of new metal but i like the sound because this whole you know subsonic tuning the baritone guitars i really like that beefy super low stand tuning down to b a you know that's that has a, a you know a really dark heavy sound i really like that i just but i'm also i grew up in 80s metal you know iron maidens of the world and in you know and so I wanted guitar solos, which is what was, was not a thing in new metal, right? So, so I was literally like, okay, what's my wish list? Well, I like the way that heavy metal bands wrote songs in the 80s, which means they had a vocalist who could sing, there were choruses, you know, big hooks, there were guitar solos, and a digestible structure. It's not like I don't like progressive bands, you know, but I prefer songs that are, you know, that, that more of a... Uh, I would say like a hit structure, you know, when there's not, you know, 17 different, you know, changes and, and five time signatures in a song. I can appreciate it. I can play that stuff for fun. Sometimes we mess around just to, to you know, just to dig around with it. But, but you know, but when it comes to the song, I, I like songs that are well written, you know, like I like how the Beatles wrote songs. You know what I mean? I like when a song is well composed. And, and so that was kind of the wish list. Like, okay. I, I like how those songs were written in the eighties. I like the guitar solos, but I really like the sound of new metal, that heavy, heavy tuning. So, so then, okay, so this is this band is gonna be a down-tuned, you know, heavy band that has that that new sound with old-school songwriting, you know, values. You know, a vocalist that can sing, right? And and that's kind of how how. how how, how I envisioned it, and I, and it wasn't really out there. Kill Switch Engage was maybe the closest thing at the time. Like Kill Switch Engage came out with uh, End of Heartache, I think 05, something somewhere around there. So 04, 05, I don't, I don't remember. And I thought like, oh yeah, you know, metal is back, you know, and 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 you know, Howard Jones can and really sing, but but I always thought like I love that band, I absolutely love that band, but I always thought like, well, but. The structures, there is still too many parts, you know what I mean? Like it's not it's not like a big arena song. You know, I wanted to 
have that aspect, like right big freaking arena songs, you know? And, and so that was the whole idea of fighting in that punch. You know, if, if I wanted to really break it down. And then, you know, if you're European, then, then you know that I'm European as well. So if you grew up in Europe, even if you're not a fan of uh, um, classical music, it's embedded in you because it's in a culture. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% that if I start to play you, you know, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Mozart, or, you know, Vivaldi, you will recognize you know, you recognize probably you can name like who that is, right? And so I always, so so European musicians are, even if they're not aware of it, they are influenced by classical music. And what that means that they're going to build songs out of the correlation of melodies and harmonies. If you look at American bands, however, most of their music is based on rhythm and blues. It's all about the groove. See what I mean? So when you look at, that's why the Pantera is Pantera. And then you look at Iron Man is Iron Man. And they both have a metal, but not even in the same universe, right? So, so and so, see, I live in America. My band is American. I love those big power groups, but I'm a European guy. You know what I mean? So, so that was also two aspects that I really wanted to marry. So that bunch have those big, you know, big, those big nasty grooves, but there's always that melodic harmonics, you know, guitars and, and harmonies over the little things. There's always some little melody hit them behind, you know, behind the, the rhythm tracks. Because, you know, because I grew up in that and 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 I thought like that's an international sound when you have both, you know? And so that's that's if, if somebody told me to like, well, can you break down what is fifing in that much? That's exactly what it is. It's the marriage of this, you know, American power grooves, European melodies, and you know, classic eight, classic 1980s ish, you know, heavy metal, hard rock songwriting with that sound of the new metal, early 2000 heavy down tuning. That's what we do. That's how we say this. It's nights like this in a harvest moon. You came too fast and it 